thank you very much for the introduction. So, I will start uh, this lecture series with a brief introduction to the solution of system of linear equations and related phase portrait. Now, you should keep in mind that phase portrait we can understand only up to 3 dimension. Of course, understanding phase portrait in 3 dimensions is a little bit difficult, but within this first lecture I confine myself only in case of 2 variable system. Now, before going to the 2 variable system, I just mention what is the um, uh, solution for single variable linear equation and a prototypical form for the single variable linear equation is dx dt this is equal to alpha x. Now, question is that why this type of equations I am starting with? I am starting with, with this type of equations that is uh, first order linear equation or linear equation in 2 variables only for the reason because when we are interested to study the dynamics of continuous time population model, then these knowledges are very much important to understand the behavior of the system that means how system evolve with the advancement of time. Now, in case of this equation, if you solve it, it is very easy to understand the general solution for this system is given by c e to the power alpha t. Now, if your this arbitrary constant c is 0 determined by the initial condition, so you are having a trivial solution for this system that is x t equal to 0. Now, this x t that means uh, x will evolve with the advancement of time either towards 0 or away from 0. So, the idea is that if your alpha is negative, then x t approaches to 0 irrespective of the condition that whether c is positive or negative. But the idea is that if c is positive, alpha is negative, then solution will be approaching to 0 through the values x greater than 0. And if in case your x0 is negative, because whatever condition you are substituting for t equal to 0 and corresponding value of x0, that will determine what is the actual value of c for the initial value problem. Then for c less than 0 and alpha less than 0, solution will be approaching to 0 as t tends to infinity. So, combining this result, we can write that modulus of xt, this approaches to 0 as t tends to infinity. Whenever this holds, whenever that is alpha greater than 0. And in case if your alpha, sorry, extremely sorry, this is less than 0. And in case alpha greater than 0, so solution will be diverging either to plus infinity or minus infinity depending upon whether C is positive or negative respectively. So, in case of alpha greater than 0, we will be having modulus x t this is going to infinity as t tends to infinity. So, this is the only single variable equation linear equation and coefficient is constant. So, this is autonomous equation in the sense that the time variable t does not appears into the equation explicitly. So, dx dt equal to alpha x. Now, we move over to system of linear equations, system of linear equations in 2 variables. In 2 variables. So, the general form for the system of linear equations in 2 variables we can write into the form that is dx dt this is equal to alpha x plus beta y and dy dt this is equal to gamma x plus delta y. This is the most general form for the system of uh, linear equations in 2 variables and you can put this linear system into a matrix form that is ddt of capital xt that is equal to a of xt where xt this is equivalent to 2 variable column matrix x t y t and capital A is the 2 cross 2 matrix alpha beta gamma delta. 
So, this is the uh, two variable system. Now, the question is that how we can find out solution for this system of linear equations. The idea is that in order to find out a solution for this linear system, we use a very basic theorem. Theorem states that, that suppose, suppose lambda comma v is eigenpair, is eigenpair for capital A. So, that means lambda is the eigenvalue and v is the associated eigenvector. So, it means that you have a non-null 2 cross 1 matrix V such that A V equal to lambda V this equation holds. So, therefore, lambda is the eigenvalue and V is the associated eigenvector. Now, if this is a eigenpair for this system, then x t this is equal to e to the power lambda t multiplied by V is a solution is a solution for the system x dot t that is equal to a x t. We can explore this idea or rather we can say that we can utilize this particular idea in order to find out the general solution for this system of linear equations. Now, roughly I will give you a quick proof of this result why this uh, e to the power lambda t into v is going to be a solution of this equation. So, in order to prove it, we just need to show that this x t equal to e to the power lambda t into v satisfies this equation. Now, keep in mind v is the eigenvector, lambda is the eigenvalue. So, lambda is a constant quantity and v is a two component column matrix. So, if you differentiate x t with respect to t, so that is x dot t, this will result in that is lambda e to the power lambda t this is into v right. Similarly, if you replace x t by e to the power lambda t into v on the right hand side, then you will be having a x t equal to a times e to the power lambda t into v. So, e to the power lambda t can be placed at the beginning then multiplied by a v. Now, v is the eigenvector with associated eigenvalue lambda. So, therefore, you will be having e to the power lambda t times lambda v. So, this is equal to lambda e to the power lambda t into v. So, this equal to this one, right. So, therefore, e to the power lambda t into v is a solution for this linear system. Now, <laughs> we can have a specific example for this system. A specific example is <coughs> you consider A is a matrix 1, 3, 1, minus 1. This is the matrix. Now, you can find out the eigenvalues of this equation uh, quickly. You can just check here trace is 0, uh, determinant is minus 4, right. So, therefore, characteristic equation will be lambda square minus 4 equal to 0 implying the eigenvalues lambda 1 comma 2, these are 2 comma minus 2. So, these are two eigenvalues. So, first of all, we can try to find out the eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue 2. So, then if you solve this equation 1, 3, 1 minus 1, this v1, v2, this is equal to 2 times v1, v2 this one. <coughs> so, then you can find out this first equation as v1 plus 3 v2 this is equal to 2 v1 this implies v1 equal to 3 v2. Now, if you consider the second component, so then you will be having v1 minus v2 equal to 2 v 2. So, again you will be having the same equation v 1 equal to 3 v 2. So, the second equation is redundant here. Now, in order to find a solution for v 1 v 2, cleverly we can choose v 2 is equal to 1. So, automatically you will be having v 1 equal to 3. So, then associated eigenvector v comes out to be 3 comma 1. So, this is the eigenvector. This is the 
corresponding eigen value. So, one solution that is given by e to the power 2 t this multiplied with 3 1 this is the vector. So, this is one solution for this system. Similarly, if you calculate the eigen vector associated with the eigen value minus 2, then you will be having the next eigen vector as 1 comma minus 1. You can verify just suppose this is your minus 2. So, if this is your minus 2, then you will be having 3 v 1 plus 3 v 2 equal to 0. So, that means v 1 plus v 2 equal to 0. So, which gives v 1 equal to 1 and v 2 equal to minus 1. So, second solution is e to the power minus 2 t 1 minus 1. So, these are actually two solutions for the system of linear equations that is x dot is equal to a x where a is given by this particular matrix. Now, once you have these two solutions, I am not going into the mathematical depth, but you can prove these two are two linearly independent solutions. And as the given system of linear equation is a linear equation, so any linear combination of these two solutions is also a solution for the <coughs> sorry given system. And hence, we can write the general solution for the given system as x t equal to c 1 e to the power 2 t 3 1 plus c 2 e to the power minus 2 t 1 minus 1. So, this is the general solution for the given system of linear equations. Now, the point is that in order to understand the face portrait, it will be quite difficult to understand that how face portraits are coming out if we working with a general format of this kind of matrix alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Rather, we can consider three specific type of matrices depending upon the nature of Eigen values of a 2 cross 2 matrix. For this general system, you know that your matrix is a 2 cross 2 matrix. So, there will be two Eigen values associated with this matrix capital A. So, what are the different possibilities for the Eigen values associated with this matrix capital A? The possibilities are number 1, both the Eigen values lambda 1 and lambda 2, they are real and distinct, right? They are real and distinct. Number 2, lambda 1 and lambda 2, they are real and equal, right? So, both the roots are real and equal. Number 3, lambda 1 and lambda 2, they are complex. Now, as we are assuming all the coefficients alpha, beta, gamma, delta, they are real. So, therefore, coefficients of the quadratic equation are real quantities. So, therefore, these two complex eigenvalues should be complex conjugate eigenvalues, right? Now, if you have a matrix alpha, beta, gamma, delta of the form alpha, beta, gamma, delta and two real distinct eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2, it can be converted to its corresponding Jordan canonical form that is lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. Afterwards, I will be showing you a particular example how you can derive the Jordan canonical form. But first of all, I am giving you the complete solution for the equations, uh, system of linear equations where the coefficient matrix are of very specific type, right? So, for that purpose, we can start with the a specific example. Of course, you can consider that is going to be a specific format of the matrix that is capital A is given by a diagonal matrix consisting with lambda 1 and lambda 2 as two eigenvalues. Now, of course, in this case, we can consider both the cases that is eigenvalues are real and distinct as well as they might be equal. But in case of two equal eigenvalues, they are two different Jordan canonical forms. I will come to that point later. So, for first case, we consider A equal to in a general format lambda 1, 0, 0, lambda 2. So, this is the matrix capital A. So, of course, its corresponding equations are decoupled equations, right? 
because if you write the corresponding equations then your equations is going to be x dot is equal to lambda 1 x and y dot that is equal to lambda 2 y you can solve it independently. But as we are considering this as a system of linear equation in terms of matrix notation. So, we follow the same approach that means finding out the eigenvalues, eigenvectors and then write down the general solutions. So, what we are having here lambda 1 is an eigenvalue with associated eigenvector 1 comma 0 and lambda 2 is an eigenvalue with associated eigenvector 0 comma 1 right. So, once you have these two eigen pair automatically you can write down the solution for the given system that is x t y t that is equal to c 1 e to the power lambda 1 t 1 0 plus c 2 e to the power lambda 2 t 0 1 right. Now, once you have this structure that is the general solution from here and onwards we can try to understand how the face portraits will looks like. So, that means in x y plane how the solution trajectory behaves or they can evolve with the advancement of time t. Now, here I will be considering two specific example because once you have two real distinct eigenvalues there are three different cases. Three different cases means both the eigenvalues are real and negative both the eigenvalues are real and positive and third possibility that both the eigenvalues are real and of opposite sign. So, first of all we consider a specific example very simple example that is capital A this is a matrix of the form 1 0 0 minus 1 right. So, if you follow this approach so immediately you can write down the corresponding solution x t y t this is equal to c 1 e to the power t 1 0 plus c 2 e to the power minus t 0 1 correct. Because 1 is one eigenvalue with eigenvector 1 0 minus 1 is another eigenvalue with eigenvector 0 1. So, this is the general solutions. Now, the question is that how the solution trajectories will looks like. So, first of all you try to understand there exist two straight line solutions. There exist two straight line solutions. How we can assure that? So, first of all from this solution we can choose C 1 equal to 1 and C 2 equal to 0. If you consider this specific values of C 1 and C 2 then what will be your solution? Your solution will be x t this is equal to e to the power t and y t this is equal to 0 right. So, the solution trajectory in x y plane. So, if we consider this is x axis this is y axis. So, this is one straight line solution given by y equal to 0 right. Now, if you consider this combination c 1 equal to 1 and c 2 equal to 0. So, along this line what will be the movement of the trajectory with the advancement of time? You can see the associated coefficient is e to the power t. So, the advancement of time this point x t will be moving towards plus infinity if you start with the positive initial condition and instead of 1 0 if you choose just for example minus 1 0 then it will be starting from here and will be approaching in this direction as t tends to infinity. So, therefore, on this line the direction of solution trajectories is this one. So, that means away from the origin right. Similarly, if you consider the next choice number 2 c 1 equal to 0 and c 2 equal to 1. If you have this choice then you can find your x t this is equal to 0 y t equal to e to the power minus t. So, again instead of 1 if you choose minus 1 then it will be minus e to the power minus t. 
so whatever may be the positive or negative choice you are having for c solution trajectory always remain on the y axis and from wherever you start it will be approaching towards the point 0 0 along the vertical line so therefore this is another straight line solution along the vertical y axis and in this way the trajectory will be moving towards this direction. So, these are actually two straight line solutions one is given by y equal to 0 another one is given by x equal to 0. Now, what will be the structure of the solution trajectories for rest of the initial conditions. So, in this case what you are considering here you are choosing the point either on x axis or on y axis. But if we choose any arbitrary initial condition except on the coordinate axis, then how the solution trajectories looks like. I can tell you at this point that all other solution trajectories will look like this one, this one and this one. But the question is that can we convince ourselves that yes, this would be the possible structure of the solution trajectories. Answer is yes, it is easily understandable because for non-zero initial condition, so that means you are assuming your C1 not equal to 0, C2 not equal to 0. So, solutions are x t equal to C1 e to the power t and y t equal to C2 e to the power minus t. So, if you take this product x t y t, so this becomes C1 C2. Right? Now, your C1, C2 are two arbitrary constants. So, this product might be positive, might be negative. So, for non-zero initial conditions, solution trajectories are given by x, y equal to constant. So, that means rectangular hyperbola. If this constant is positive, so therefore, you will be having this branch and if your product is negative, then you will be having this branch and these arrows can be understood just looking at either this direction or you can apply some other technique that I will be explaining in my third lecture when I will be considering the three dimensional system. But the simplest idea is that here you can choose one point, look at the given equation, find out the direction of x and y and then look at the resulting direction. So, this will give you the direction like this one and this one. So, that is called phase flow. right? So, this is the example where both the eigenvalues are uh, real, but they are of opposite sign. So, next quickly we can consider one more example with the same format that is two eigenvalues are real and distinct, but just for uh, specific reason we can take this example this is minus 1 0 0 minus 2 right. So, again you can find out eigenvalues eigenvectors and you can write down the general solutions in this case. So, what is the general solution general solution will be c 1 e to the power minus t 1 0 plus c 2 e to the power minus 2 t 0 1 these things. So, if you apply the same kind of argument, so there are two straight line solutions, one is y axis, second one is x axis. Now, in this case, along both the axis, solutions will be approaching towards the point 0 comma 0, this is x and this is y. Right. Now, the question is that how other trajectories looks like? So, that means if we start from any point apart from the coordinate axis, so in which direction trajectories will move. In this case, you can write down the solution as x t equal to c 1 e to the power minus t and y t equal to c 2 e to the power minus 2 t. Right. Now, in this case, if you square at the both side of x t equal to c 1 e to the power minus t 
and then eliminate e to the power minus 2t from both the equations, then you will be having the solutions in the form yt is equal to some alpha times x square t, correct? Because x t by c1 whole square equal to e to the power minus 2t, yt by c2 equal to e to the power minus 2t. So, equating you will be having x square by y that is equal to constant. Here we are assuming c1 and c2 are both non-zero, right? And as c1, c2 are arbitrary quantity, so therefore it might be positive, might be negative depending upon whether your c2 is positive or negative respectively. So, if this is the general format of the solution trajectories for the given system, so therefore other solution trajectories except the solutions on coordinate axis, they looks like this one, right? So, this is the face portrait and you can uh, similarly consider the other possibilities. That means, this is say minus 3, this is minus 1. So, in that case, what will, uh, what will be the change in the diagram? So, here all the trajectories are having x axis as its tangent, but in case the magnitude of first eigenvalue is larger than the second one, then vertical y axis will be tangential to the all solution trajectories near origin, right? So, this is the structure of solutions in case of two uh, distinct eigenvalues. Now, The point is that I have already explained that this kind of system can be derived from the given equation in case you have two real distinct eigenvalues. So, now I can show you that how this result can be utilized in order to uh, understand the nature of the solution trajectories in general system which are not in the Jordan canonical form. <coughs> In order to explain this result, I can go back to the first example where we have considered A equal to 1, 3, 1, minus 1. This is, was our capital A. So, for this problem, we have obtained these eigenpairs that is 2 with eigenvector 3, 1. This is eigenvalue corresponding uh, eigenvector and another eigenvalue eigenvectors are given by this one minus 2 1 minus 1. So, now I can construct a matrix capital T consisting with these two eigenvectors as its column. So, therefore, the matrix T is given by 3 1 1 minus 1. It is a 2 cross 2 matrix. Therefore, you can calculate easily t inverse, this is going to be determinant is minus 4. So, therefore, minus 1 by 4 and then these two element will be interchanged and for these two element sign will be changed. Now, the idea is that if we calculate t inverse a t, this is the standard technique for deriving Jordan canonical form. I am just giving you the explanation through an example, not going into the details such that you can have certain essence that how to do it. Next, you can apply these things for higher dimensional system as well as for the cases with repeated eigenvalue as well as complex eigenvalues or larger matrix consisting with both real eigenvalues, complex eigenvalues and so on. And at the end, I will be giving you a reference where you can see all these details. So, now we are interested to calculate this T inverse AT. So, first of all, if you calculate T inverse A, so this is nothing but 1 by 4, 1 by 4, 1 by 4 minus 3 by 4, this multiplied with this matrix 1, 3, 1 minus 1. So, this will be equal to, this is 1 by 4, 1 by 4, so this is equal to half, then 3 by 4 minus 1 by 4, so this is equal to half then 1 by 4 minus 3 by 4. So, this is equal to minus half and finally, 3 by 4 plus 3 by 4. So, this is equal to 3 by 2, 
right this is t inverse a now if you calculate now if you calculate t inverse a t so this is equal to half half minus half 3 by 2 this multiplied with this multiplied with uh, 3 1 uh, this matrix t 3 1 1 minus 1. So, therefore, this will be equal to 3 by 2 plus half. So, this is 2, this is half minus half 0, this is minus 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 0, this one and this is going to be uh, minus half minus 3 by 2. So, this is equal to minus 2, right. Now, the next question is that I have this given matrix A associated system is x dot equal to a x. So, how this matrix can be utilized in order to understand the solution of the original system. The idea is that your given system is x dot is equal to a x. You have defined the matrix T here. So, you can use a transformation x equal to T y you use this matrix transformation. So, x is x t y t. So, you can consider capital Y as say y 1 t y 2 t, but in terms of matrix notation, if we substitute this x equal to t y in this equation. So, therefore, you will be having t y dot that is equal to a t y. So, x is replaced by t y, right. So, therefore, in terms of transformed variable, you will be having this matrix T inverse A T Y. Now, I forgot to mention one thing that in case of A having two real distinct eigenvalues, so therefore, eigenvectors are linearly independent to each other. So, in this way, if you construct the matrix T, so this matrix T is always invertible, right. So, once you have this invertible matrix, so you can have this particular structure and then you can call this matrix as say J which is the corresponding Jordan canonical form. So, once you have the solution trajectory for this transform system that is y dot equal to J y which is very much clear and then if you use the inverse transformation that is y equal to T inverse x. So, accordingly you will be having solution for the original system as well as you can understand how the face portraits will looks like. Now, you know that structure of the face portrait for this system y dot equal to j y. Now, under transformation how the face portraits will looks like for the original system. So, then you can recall that for original system these are the Eigen pairs. So, therefore, general solution is given by x t this is equal to c 1 e to the power 2 t 3 1 plus c 2 e to the power minus 2 t 1 minus 1. So, what we have done earlier in this case also first of all we can try to find out two straight line solutions. So, how can you find out straight line solution you substitute c 1 equal to 1 and c 2 equal to 0. If you choose c 1 equal to 1 and c 2 equal to 0 then you will be having x t is equal to 3 e to the power 2 t and y t this is equal to e to the power 2 t right. So, therefore, x equal to uh, this is 3 this is 1. So, therefore, if you multiply this by 3. So, therefore, this is equal to 3 this one. So, you will be having x equal to 3 y this is one solution. So, in the face portrait this is your vertical y axis this is x axis. So, y equal to one third x, y equal to one third x means you will be having roughly a straight line like this. Now, along this line the coefficient is e to the power 2 t, this is positive. So, solution will be approaching away from the origin, right. Similarly, if you consider c 1 equal to 0 and c 2 equal to 1. So, then you will be having x t 
that is equal to e to the power minus 2 t and y t this is equal to minus e to the power minus 2 t. So, therefore, solution is x t plus y t this is equal to 0. So, that means this is a straight line along which trajectories will be approaching towards this one. Right? Now, if you just apply your common sense that now this axis are rotated little bit. So, the rest of the trajectories will be stretched accordingly. So, therefore, the final phase portrait will looks like this one. This is this one and finally, this is this one. Right. So, this will be the solution structure for the uh, this kind of two variable system with real eigenvalues. Now, in case of complex eigenvalues, the question is that given system of equations are real, then how to find out two real solutions out of this, whether we can apply the same theory or not. For that purpose, you choose this matrix A equal to 0 beta minus beta 0. This is the matrix. So, immediately you will be having the eigenvalues lambda 1 comma 2 that is plus minus i beta. These are the eigenvalues. If you interested to find out, we need to find out the eigenvectors. So, therefore, 0 beta minus beta 0, this multiplied with v1 v2. So, this is equal to i beta times v1 v2. So, from the first equation, you will be having beta v2 that is equal to i beta v1. So, implies v2 equal to i v1. Right. Now, if you solve the second equation, solve for the second component that is minus beta v1 is equal to i beta v2, then you will be having the same equation. Right. So, therefore, from here we can find out the eigenvector as v equal to 1 i. So, if you choose v 1 equal to 1, so v 2 is coming out to be i. Right. Now, you apply the same result that means e to the power lambda t into v is going to be a solution for the given system. Interestingly, in this case you will be having two real solutions from this single uh, expression e to the power lambda t into v. So, e to the power i beta t this multiplied with 1 i. So, that means cos beta t plus i sin beta t this multiplied with 1 i. And now from here if you separate the real and imaginary part, so from the first equation you will be having cos beta t this multiplied with this one. So, that is minus sin beta t this is the real part plus i times sin beta t and then cos beta t. So, this is the real component and imaginary component and you can verify that these are two linearly independent solution for the given system. So, therefore, general solution x t this is given by c 1 cosine beta t minus sin beta t plus c 2 sin beta t and this is cosine beta t right. Now, in this case there is no straight line solutions. Correct? You cannot find out any straight line solution by a specific choice of C1 and C2. So, how the solution trajectories are looks like? Solution trajectories will be in this case all concentric circles. These are all concentric circles. But after getting these concentric circles, uh, we need to understand what will be the direction of the solution trajectories these are going to be clockwise or anti-clockwise. So, this rotation whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise that should be determined by the value of beta. Correct. Now, the question is that how we can ensure that uh, what is the 
appropriate direction of the solution trajectories. Now, in order to understand that particular direction of the solution trajectories, you take a specific example beta equal to 1, right? And then we can have a clever choice for C1 and C2 in order to understand in which direction solution trajectories will rotate. So, what is the clever choice C1 equal to 1, C2 equal to 0, then your solution is xt is equal to cosine t and yt this is equal to minus sin t. Now, if you choose two particular time point that is t equal to 0, so this corresponds to a point 1 comma 0 on x axis. Next, if you choose another point t equal to pi by 2, so then this will be giving you a point on the negative y axis, correct? So, without a loss of genetic, you can if you assume that this distance is 1 0, so therefore this will be 0 comma minus 1. So, at t equal to 0, if you start from here, so trajectory will be reaching at this point at t equal to pi by 2. So, therefore, rotation is going to be in this direction, right? So, once you have a specific values of beta, you substitute the value of beta and then choose C1 equal to 1 and C2 equal to 0 or C2, C1 equal to 0, C2 equal to 1 and then you can uh, find out two points like this. So, immediately you will be having in which direction solution trajectories will move, correct? Now, another uh, case where you will be having complex conjugate eigenvalues, I am not going into the details, but I am sure you will be able to work out this kind of problem that is A equal to matrix alpha beta minus beta alpha, right? In this case, what will be the change in the system? Change in the system will be eigenvalues are lambda 1 comma 2 that is alpha plus minus i beta and you can verify that v1 will be the same eigenvector 1 comma i and if you proceed in a similar manner, so in this case you will be having the general solution xt equal to c1 e to the power alpha t this multiplied with cosine beta t minus sine beta t plus c2 e to the power alpha t this is sin beta t and this is cosine beta t, this one. So, accordingly in this case also you can choose C1 equal to 1, C2 equal to 0. So, if your alpha greater than 0, then trajectories will move away from the origin. If your alpha less than 0, solution will be coming inside that means towards origin and trajectories are spiral either with decaying magnitude or increasing magnitude. So, depending upon the values of alpha and beta, you will be having four different kind of phase portraits. One is like this, if alpha less than 0, either this one or this one in case of alpha less than 0 and in case of beta uh, whatever may be positive or negative and alpha greater than 0, then you will be having any one of these two structures, right? So, these two cases for alpha less than 0 and these two cases for alpha greater than 0. Right. So, finally, we are left with only one more case that is where both the eigenvalues are real and equal. If your associated Jordan canonical form is of the form that is lambda 0 0 lambda, you can apply the first approach in order to find out the general solution. But in case your Jordan canonical form is given by lambda 1 0 lambda this one, then that particular technique of e to the power lambda t into v 
as a solution of the given system will not work only for the reason because here lambda is a repeated eigen value and you can verify that if you solve the eigen value eigen vector problem that is a v equal to lambda v you will be able to find out only one eigen vector so there is a concept of generalized eigen vector i am not going into the mathematical details because this is a part of the course on mathematical biology itself so i am giving you the straight forward way out to find out a general solution for this system it is in some sense very nice uh, structure because x dot t is equal to lambda x plus y and y dot t that is equal to y itself correct so if you solve the first this equation y dot equal to y so this implies y t that is equal to c2 e to the power t sorry this should be lambda this should be lambda right so you can easily solve this equation y dot equal to lambda y equal to this one now if you substitute this solution into this equation so then you will be having x dot is equal to lambda x plus c2 e to the power lambda t so then you can write down this is x dot minus lambda x is equal to c2 e to the power lambda t then you can write d d t of x e to the power minus lambda t this is equal to c2 because it is a standard first order linear non homogeneous equation you can find out the integrating factor as e to the power minus lambda t so multiplying both side by e to the power minus lambda t and rearranging term on the left hand side you can have this expression and then if you solve this equation then you will be having x e to the power minus lambda t that is equal to c1 plus c2 t so from here you will be having x t equal to e to the power lambda t times c1 plus c2 t so therefore what is the general solution so x t equal to c1 e to the power lambda t 1 comma 0 plus c2 e to the power lambda t t 1 right so in this case you will be having only one straight line solution that is given by y equal to 0 correct because if you choose c2 equal to 1 c1 non zero so this is not a straight line solution but the interesting question is that how the solution trajectories looks like for this kind of system it is a very uh, not a straight forward system so just consider a specific example x dot equal to minus x plus y and <coughs> y dot equal to minus y so for this system solution is x t is equal to c 1 e to the power minus t 1 0 plus c 2 e to the power minus t this is t 1 so you have one solution that is y equal to 0 along this line solutions are approaching towards the origin so therefore in x y plane you will be having the straight line solution x y this is approaching towards the origin but rest of the solution trajectories they looks like this one and this one now the question is that how can we speculate that trajectories looks like this one there is a very nice tricks from this equation from these two equations you can write dy dx this is equal to y by x minus y right so the solution trajectories have tangents parallel to the y axis whenever they intersect the line x equal to y because if you take x plus uh, x minus y equal to 0 if you take x minus y equal to 0 then dy dx is undefined right so that means tangent to the solution trajectory is there parallel to the y axis so therefore you have a turning point here similarly if you choose some points on y axis on the positive direction and as well as negative direction you can find that there is a tangential direction they are pointing towards this direction and in this case you will be having 
this direction. So, therefore, combining this idea and the fact that uh, tangent to the solution trajectories are parallel to the y axis along the line x equal to y, we can speculate this is the phase portrait for this system, right. So, now if we summarize the solution for two variable linear system, then we can say that any matrix capital A that is of the form alpha, beta, gamma, delta that can be converted to any one of these three forms, this one or lambda 1, 0 lambda and number 3 that is alpha, beta, minus beta, alpha. So, we have the idea of the uh, finding solution for any one of these three system and Jordan canonical form give us the opportunity to understand how the linear system can be converted to a transform system where the coefficient matrix is any one of these three Jordan canonical forms. So, then you can find out the solution and accordingly you can find out the nature of the solution trajectories that is the phase portraits, right. And this idea can be extended to three and higher dimensional system also. And here I just give you uh, two references that you can see for further details. Number one that is differential equation dynamical systems and introduction to an introduction to chaos by Hirsch, Smell and Divane and number 2 differential equations and dynamical systems by L Parco for further details, right. So, do you have any couple of one or two quick questions? Yeah. So, there is a case that uh, both the things are real, one is distinct uh, somewhat. Yes. So, in that case, for the post phase, phase portrait, is, is a, for real and distinct, we get somewhat a parabola, I mean, a rectangle metropola. Yeah. For uh, real and equal, we get a parabola. Yes. Three by three matrix. Uh, the idea is that uh, first of all, you can find out the general solutions, and there are different types of combinations. Yeah, yeah, that's because in case of three eigenvalues, all of all three of them they are real and distinct, okay. real and distinct. But that will be combined with other different cases. That means two eigenvalues are negative, one positive, two positive one negative. So, first of all you need to find out again the straight line solutions, right, because your transform system will be lambda 1 0 0, 0 lambda 2 0, 0 0 lambda 3. So, then your three straight line solutions are x axis, y axis, z axis. Then you can consider the case lambda 1 negative, lambda 2 negative, lambda 3 positive. So, along x axis trajectories will be converging towards origin along y axis trajectories will be converging to origin, but along z axis solutions will be diverging from the origin. And then you need some preliminary ideas about the uh, curve and surfaces in three dimension that is three dimensional geometry. What will happen that in this case whatever you are having two eigenvalues, there are two different cases. That means those two eigenvalues which are negative, they are equal or not. If they are not equal, then you will be having some parabolic like structure on x y plane, right. But as along z axis the solutions are diverging towards infinity, so then you can just try to think about okay, this is your z axis, yeah. this is your x axis, this is your y axis. So, plane will be looks like this one, 
right? Because it is approaching towards origin along x axis and y axis, but diverging towards infinity along z axis, right? Similarly, if you have both the eigenvalues real, distinct, negative and equal, real, distinct, negative and equal, but able to produce two linearly independent eigenvectors. Can you tell me what will be the phase portrait in two dimension? Just two dimension that I have not covered in my lecture. It is a very good question. You just try to understand that in that case, solution trajectories will looks like this one because all the solutions, they are actually straight line solutions. Two real equal negative eigenvalues both are negative and they correspond to two linearly independent eigenvectors. Then you are having this kind of structure. So, along x y plane maybe you are having this structure, along z axis it is repelling outward. So, then you will be having the corresponding phase portrait. Another question that you are going for a diagonalization or you are using AEOS? Not it is a diagonalization rather it is a method of Jordan canonical form. Yeah. In case of singular matrix, Jordan canonical form will uh, results in some matrix with some of the eigenvalues that is equal to 0. Yeah. That is possible. That is possible. Because if you have one eigenvalue 1 and another eigenvalue is 0, okay. so two real eigenvalues they are real and distinct. So corresponding eigenvectors are linearly independent. Yeah. So, once they are linearly independent, so by construction your matrix T is invertible. So, automatically you can convert to Jordan canonical form. So, that means you will be having this kind of structure with lambda 1 say 1 and lambda 2 equal to 0. So, that is going to be the Jordan canonical form. So, the same thing is also applicable for generalized universes. You would say something about a generalized Yes, yes, higher dimensional system. Because higher dimensional system, I do not want to go into the details only for this and because if I just go to say fourth dimension, there will be too much complicated situations. Just think about that all the eigenvalues, all the eigenvalues are complex conjugate and they are repeated. They are repeated. So, then instead of Jordan uh, canonical form matrix, you will be having some sort of Jordan block form, right? And just you can imagine a situation that this structure with lambda as a 2 cross 2 Jordan block. So, in that case this 1 will be converted to the matrix I. Like in 2 dimension, in case of 2 equal eigenvalues, you have one possibility lambda 0 0 lambda is 1 Jordan canonical form and lambda 1 0 lambda is another Jordan canonical form. So, in case of complex eigenvalues in 4 dimension, you will be having one Jordan block here, another Jordan block here with same pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues or the same block here with identity matrix this one. And all these details you can get in these books in a very lucid manner. They have shown by the transformation of coordinate system, how you can construct the general matrix T and in general they have derived what is the Jordan canonical form, right? I think time is over.